Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. My affinity for HF portable operation has led me to acquire rigs that are best suited to that purpose. My Yesu FT817ND and FT897D are both well matched to outdoor battery operated pursuits, but frankly are not the best when deployed in a modern home environment. Their lack of IF DSP noise filtering leaves them open to the ravages of all manner of QRM emitting devices found liberally sprinkled throughout today's urban and suburban settings. In addition to the FT897D and the 817ND, I have a classic from the 1980s, the ICOM IC740, which is a grand old analog rig. Of the three units, the FT897 is the only one to feature AFDSP for help in mitigating QRM. Listening to these rigs in my home shack can be very tiring given all the noise I encounter at my location. As an example, let's listen in on 40 meters for a moment on my IC740. Okay, let's go ahead and move on then to the uh, fourth call area. And uh, number 20 off the free list, number 21 of the Whiskey Clock Truck Tour Hotel. That's Dwight, he's a club officer, he's located in Florida. Uh, number 21 on the list is Delta F4 in Florida. Whiskey Alpha 4, November India Delta. That's going to be Dave in North Carolina. Number 22 on the list is going to be Whiskey Alpha 4, November India Delta in North Carolina. Last year, I had the pleasure of using an ICOM 746 Pro for a few days in my shack. A well designed IFDSP rig like the 746 Pro can transform signals received in a noisy environment into beautiful, clean audio. I could not believe how quiet and pleasant listening to the ham bands was while using the 746 Pro compared to the racket experienced using my current rigs. Full disclosure, with other priorities at play, I do not have the sort of disposable income that allows me to go out and purchase a good IFDSP rig without selling off either my 817 or 897. I'm not going to sell off either of those as long as I have the ability to engage in portable operations. Knowing this to be the case, I pondered adding an external AFDSP noise filtering unit for use with the transceivers in my home station. It's worth noting the purpose of a noise filter is to make an improvement on an existing bad situation. The ultimate solution to any noise issue is to find and stop the source of the noise rather than adding a component to the radio system to mitigate the issue. However, that is not always possible, especially if the devices generating the interference are outside your own home and beyond your control. In cases like this, adding filtering capability to your station is the most reasonable option. After doing some research, I learned that a company named TimeWave has been selling external AFDSP noise filters for many years now. Their original model, the DSP-9, first brought to market in the early 1990s, has a good number of positive reviews online. So when I recently noticed a used DSP-9 for sale on a local online swap meet at a reasonable price, I acquired it. I went into the experience with the full understanding that an external AF filter could not possibly be as effective as IFDSP. But here is the question I wanted an answer to. Could an external AF noise filter provide enough improvement to allow me to enjoy my current radios when used here on the desk and thereby earn itself a permanent place in my shack? Hey, if it didn't work out, I would not be out much money and I will have learned from the activity. Now that you know the backstory, Let's take a look at the TimeWave DSP-9 and see what we are dealing with. TimeWave describes the DSP-9 as an audio noise filter for amateur radio voice and CW operation. The DSP-9 uses digital signal processing technology to implement algorithms that perform three basic filter functions. Random noise reduction, 
This is the filter I am most interested in. Adaptive multi-tone notch filtering, also known as tone noise reduction. This feature reduces tones caused by tuner uppers and neighboring AM broadcast stations. Lastly, band pass filtering. In time waves words, band pass filtering removes the high and low audio frequency components that do not contribute significantly to speech intelligibility. This type of filtering should help to improve copy of single sideband signals that are affected by adjacent channel interference. Of course, band pass filtering can also be very effective for CW communications. In this video, my focus will be on the random noise reduction filter of the DSP-9, as that is my largest issue here at the shack. Here is the DSP-9 shown next to the 817 for a size comparison. It's compact with a fairly simple user interface. Starting on the front panel, there is a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone jack. Next up is a bypass button that allows the unfiltered audio to be fed unprocessed to an external speaker. Note that the DSP-9 plugs into the transceiver's audio output jack. An external speaker must be used with the DSP-9. Regardless of the position of the bypass button, the DSP-9 must be powered on or audio will not be sent to the external speaker. The next button allows for switching between voice and CW modes. What this switch really does is change the settings available on the next four push buttons. Since I use voice modes exclusively, I will not spend much time addressing the CW feature set. The next two switches are labeled noise reduction. The first is either a tone eliminator for single sideband or a filter center frequency selector for CW. The CW filter center frequency choices are 600 Hz and 750 Hz, or 400 Hz and 500 Hz if the DSP-9 is updated to firmware version 2. In regard to the firmware version, according to the TimeWave website, firmware updates are still available for the DSP-9. The second switch is for random noise reduction. The last two buttons control audio bandwidth. For single sideband, the default bandwidth options are 1.8 kHz, 2.4 kHz, and 3.1 kHz. If the DSP-9 has been updated to firmware version 2, these options can be changed to 1.8 kHz, 2.0 kHz, and 2.4 kHz. Finally, there is a knob for power on and AF gain. This knob becomes your AF gain control going forward. I'll demonstrate this in a minute. On the back panel, you will see a pair of RCA female jacks. The audio input jack is where the audio from the rig's external speaker jack is connected. Next up is the speaker output RCA jack. You must use an external speaker when using the TimeWave DSP-9. In this video, I'll be using a Yesu SP-6, which is a very good choice for an external speaker. The SP-6 has two audio filter switches on its front panel. During the test, I will leave these filters in the normal or off position so as to present the DSP-9 in true unaided test conditions. From a voltage perspective, the DSP-9 will function correctly as long as it is fed within the range of 12 to 16 volts. The minimum current draw is 1 amp. Note that TimeWave cautions against the use of switching power supplies. Further to this, I have read reports that warn users to not even think about using wall warts. As an experiment, when I first acquired the DSP-9, I tried running it off a laptop AC adapter that was rated to deliver 12 volts at 3 amps. That was definitely a switching supply. The DSP-9 powered up, but the audio was completely drowned out with a loud AC hum. I then used my Alinko DM330MV switching supply to power the DSP-9, and everything worked fine. One last point about the power requirement. 
the one amp current draw specification negates its practicality as an accessory for HF portable operations. Despite this, in my experience, DSP noise filtering is not necessary in the relatively RF quiet locations I operate from, so I won't ding the DSP-9 for that. The final piece to getting the DSP-9 connected is the audio cables. TimeWave recommends using shielded coaxial cables with RCA connectors. I've used the shielded audio cables and they are working just fine. Okay, let's get the DSP-9 hooked up to my Yaesu FT817 and see how it performs. The way to set up the DSP-9 is to increase the AF gain control on the rig just to the point where the normal light illuminates occasionally and the overload light does not illuminate at all. Once done, the DSP-9's gain control becomes the AF gain that you will use as a volume control going forward. One tip I picked up from reading the experiences of others is that if you tune through the bands with the DSP-9's narrow bandwidth filters turned on, is that you can pass right over signals without realizing they are there, particularly in CW mode. The simplest way to avoid this is to hit the bypass button when tuning. Then turn off the bypass when you have found the activity you want to listen to. Now let's connect the DSP-9 up to the FT897D. As mentioned earlier, the 897D has built-in AF-DSP. To give you an idea of how well the built-in AF-DSP works on the 897D, let's listen to the difference it makes on the local QRM here in the shack. After that, we'll compare it to the DSP-9. Here is the 897D without using either the rig's built-in AFDSP or the time wave filter. Uh, QSL the 59 up there from Martinsburg. You're also also a 59 to 59. Uh, thank you, sir. 59 both ways. Kilo Delta 8, Yankee Whiskey Fox Hunt. Back to the net. One well, good call. That's a Roger contact. Now let's switch on the 897D's built-in DSP. Hi, number 32 on the list, Kilo Bravo V. Three, uh, uh, Lima Uniform Echo. Uh, Joe in Ohio, your call, Joe. Uh, KD3 LUE, Joe, uh, your call. 
Now let's turn off the 897D's AF DSP and turn on the time wave to compare. Uh, I'd like to try line number 33, line number 33. Alpha Charlie 8, Echo Romeo. Alpha Charlie 8, Echo Romeo. I'll copy KB3LUE. Uh, you're 5 9, Joe. Alpha Charlie 8, Echo Romeo. 5 9 in the Michigan. Nice late, no. That's it. Uh, you have a voice signal too, 5 9 or 5 9 or both ways. KB3 LUE, one good call. Back to net, check out, check out, check out. Thank you. Finally, let's turn both on. Alright, got the Roger contact. Uh, and uh, that's please be involved. Uh, number 32, KB3 LUE has checked out. Joe, oh, thanks for joining us tonight. Number 33, Alpha Charlie 8, Echo Romeo. Mike, your call. I found this to be a very interesting exercise. Recall my particular situation was based upon wanting to use my excellent performing field rigs in a noisy home environment. For this particular application, the TimeWave DSP9 provides a worthwhile measure of relief from the grating wall of noise. It is not a magic elixir and will not provide the level of performance a modern rig with built-in DSP will. Is it worth the investment of less than $100? For me, the answer is yes. If you have no interest in ever working HF portable and are therefore not tied to a rig with a low receive current specification, you should probably do yourself a favor and get a nice IF DSP equipped rig instead. But if you do find yourself with an older rig that you can't bear to part with and local QRM is an issue, keep an eye on the used market and see if you can find yourself a TimeWave DSP-9 or one of its more modern successors. You might find it makes enough of a difference to give that classic transceiver a few more years of usable lifespan. That's all for this time. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. And feel free to leave a comment below. I read all comments and respond to as many as I can. People like you who give my videos thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave comments are the ones who fuel my passion to continue producing more content. Until next time, get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3TWM.